We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. So don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash manifest. Just go to indeed.com slash manifest right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Your dog is a member of the family, so serve them the top quality food that they deserve, and that is Nom Nom. All dogs are individuals and they deserve to be served like it. Nom Nom delivers freshly made dog food personalized to your dog's preferences and unique caloric needs. Nom Nom is made with 100% premium ingredients. That means 0% freaky fillers or anything funky. Say bye to boring dog food. Your dog deserves a reason to run to their bowl every single meal, every single day. Go right now for 50% off for your no risk two week trial at trynom.com slash manifest. Spelled try slash manifest for 50% off. That's trynom.com slash manifest. Hi guys, welcome back to Manifest with Tori D. Simone. I'm your host, Tori D. Simone. And I'm so out of practice of this podcast. Oh my God. I recorded my last episode like almost 12 days ago. So I feel like I'm like such a rookie at recording my podcast right now. But hi guys, happy Monday or whatever day it is that you're listening to this. I hope you're having an amazing day so far, an amazing start to the week. Oh my gosh. I like seriously feel like I like don't know what to say, but I have so much to say and I'm so excited to be chatting with you guys and just like discuss everything that has been going on the past week or so. Um, If this episode is out a little bit late today, I apologize. I have been traveling this past week and that is like a big reason for um, what today's episode is all about, which reminds me that I actually forgot my phone over there and I need it. So hang on, I'm going to grab my phone. This episode is channeling like very old school manifest with Tori Simone vibes, which I have been kind of been missing and kind of been very nostalgic about lately. Because if you guys have been listening since the very beginning, when I first launched this podcast in 2019, it was very off the cuff, meaning I would kind of just speak on whatever was going on in my life at the time and ideas would kind of come from that and I would have like a flow through that and an episode would come about. Now, recently what I do is I script out my episodes and I speak on the script and that I I really enjoy doing that as well. But there are some moments like today, for example, when I don't really have a concrete script that I want to talk about, but I have an idea that I want to talk about and I have free flowing ideas that I want to discuss. And it's almost just like catching up with a friend and talking with a friend. I have nothing scripted out today. I just have a few bullet points to go off of. And that's really, that's really it. And I enjoy that format because I feel like it's very authentic and it does tend to lean towards a more vulnerable side of me in these podcasts, which I know you guys enjoy because one, we get to be closer and two, it's just nice to know that like someone you listen to on the internet goes through very similar things as you. I think when we look to influencers or honestly just anyone online, we think that they are unrelatable to us because maybe they have followers or they might have more money or we perceive them as more successful or we idolize their life or whatever the capacity might be. We think that they're not relatable on a human level, but regardless of fame, money, perceived success, we are all humans at the end of the day and we all share that common experience of being a human. And I think episodes like this kind of remind us of that. So there's a few things that I wanted to touch upon today. Number one, the vacation that I was just on last week, which was really amazing. Number two, fear and overcoming fear. And number three, just kind of where I'm at, like mentally with um, 
not like health sounds like there's bad things going on with my health. I'm very grateful that I'm healthy, but I just kind of feel like my mindset has been shifting back to older ways that I have been really proud to move on from. But just like anything, it's, it's always a work in progress. And I just kind of wanted to chat about that today, like body image and things like that. Um, So let's first just begin with like a little trip recap of this past week while I was away. I also just want to quickly apologize for any video episodes. Um, The last two episodes I recorded on video, but I recorded them the same day. It was my book club episode and my morning routine episode. And for some reason, my memory card just kept corrupting. So I kept losing all the footage. So I didn't have any videos to upload. So I do apologize for that, but we are back in business on the video side of things. So this video is up on YouTube and it's back to normal. And uh, my appearance is out of the question because yesterday, last night we had a wedding. So like I thankfully curled my hair for the wedding and this is just second day hair, but I just got back from a workout at Stride. We did a really fun like dance sculpt. Oh, a sculpt society. We did that as like a continuing education with our staff at Stride and it was really fun. It was a hard workout. You guys like it was 30 minutes and by like the 15, 16, 17 minute mark, like I was pretty toast. Like it was a really fun workout. It was a good workout and it was, it was really fun anyway. Um, so that's my appearance. Um, okay. So this past week I was traveling and I went to Santa Barbara, California with my family. We went for my grandma's 85th birthday. Now my grandma, her story is really interesting and I would actually love to have her on the podcast and have her tell a bunch of stories because number one, she would love to tell stories from when she was growing up, but she has a really cool upbringing. She was actually born in Hawaii. Um, She's not um, like Hawaiian but her family moved to Hawaii and then she was born in Hawaii. Um, so I, I, I don't know what the proper term, like I, either way, she's not Hawaiian. She was just born in Hawaii. So my grandma was born in Hawaii and they, her family moved out of Hawaii during the Pearl Harbor bombing. Um, her dad worked at the pineapple, the Dole pineapple plant and there was a bombing obviously the Pearl Harbor attack and, um, they got on a ship and they ended up in California and they then lived in Santa Barbara for my grandma's upbringing and childhood and stuff like that. So in summers, when I was growing up, we would always go out to Santa Barbara and that was just like where we summered and stuff like that. And it it was really, really fun. I actually have not been back to Santa Barbara since 2015, which is the summer that I moved out to LA and then, this is a story for another day, but like shit kind of hit the fan with my one, like my living situation out there, like kind of blew up in my face. So I ran up to Santa Barbara and that was like my safe haven. And then I fled and never returned. Um, that is a story that I should, I should just like tell my old YouTube stories one day because I have so many and it's such an old life of mine like it feels like a a different person when I think about that and it was so funny the other day I was at Brooke and Danielle's live show for gals on the go and it was just so insane bizarre amazing all of those things to like be brought back into that world of who I used to be seeing like my friends that I like literally I grew up with Brooke and Danielle like this is how I explained it to my friends. It was like, I went to high school, but then I had a second high school of online YouTube friends and like the YouTube world, like, you know, like there were clicks, I guess you could say, like there were friend groups, like people dated within YouTube. Like it was just a really cool way to grow up. And I never tell those stories because you just didn't really do that, but I'm so far removed from it now that I feel like I could. But anyway, when I was at Gals on the Go, it was so cool to like kind of be brought back into that world. Like a few people asked me for pictures and stuff and I was like, oh my God, I haven't been asked for a picture in like years. So like, yeah, like let's get a picture. Like I get asked for pictures at Stride and stuff, but like just out in like a show and like that kind of setting hasn't happened in so long. And um, it was just, it was just so cool to see Brooke and Danielle and how we like grew up together on YouTube and how they've really just completely 
evolved and created such a massive and amazing brand for themselves. It was just, it was so cool to see their show and to see them where they're at now. It was just, it's really cool. So to just almost like be face to face with like a path that my life could have gone, but I chose a different path is a crazy experience. Like it, it was just a really cool night. Anyway, so what I'm getting at is one day I will film a podcast episode where I talk about all of my old YouTube stories and I will tell like all my fun stories because I have wild stories that I've just never told. Um, But anyway, so yeah, I used to go to Santa Barbara all the time. I haven't been since 2015 and this year for my grandma's 85th birthday, she was like, I want everyone to come out to Santa Barbara and we are just going to have a fun weekend. So um, she rented us an Airbnb and it was so amazing. And so it was my family, which is my mom, my dad, my sister, who my sister lives in Idaho. So seeing her was just the best part of my trip. Honestly, I love spending time with my sister whenever I can. A lot of people don't know I have a sister because I don't see her very often. Um, so whenever I do see her, it's always really special. So my sister and then my boyfriend came and her boyfriend came. So it was the six of us and then my grandma. And, um, my grandfather passed away in 2017. Um, so it was just my grandma and then my cousins that I don't see very often as well. So it was my cousin, Sarah, my cousin, Nick, and then my aunt and uncle and, um, Nick's girlfriend Lex. So, um, there was 12 of us total and it was a really fun week. Now I don't like to fly at all. I have horrible flight anxiety and flying anxiety. And it all started in 20, let me think it was my junior year of high school. I think it was like 2015 is when it started. Yeah, something like that. It, it, it started back then because I had just a really bad landing experience one time. And then since then, like it's just every flight, it gets better and then worse. It's always like one step forward and then two steps backwards, but eventually you make forward progress. It is hard. I do get better at it each time, but I also get worse at it each time. I don't know. It's, it's very bizarre and I will get into flight anxiety in a little bit. I'm going to talk about that in this episode. I'm going to talk about overcoming fear, like I said. Um, but I was really anxious to go on the trip just because I did have to fly across the country for this trip, but it definitely helped that I had my boyfriend and we flew out with my dad. My mom flew out a little bit earlier to be with my grandma cause it's her mom. Um, anyway, all that being said, it was a really, really fun trip and it was the first vacation that we've taken since pre COVID, to be honest, like we vacationed to Jamaica the week before COVID like shut the world down in 2020. So this was really the first vacation where it wasn't for a holiday. It wasn't for like, we went to Idaho for Thanksgiving, but it was really the first like vacation. Like my boyfriend and I, we've been to Disney a few times since COVID, but you guys know Disney is not a vacation. Disney is like a whole thing. And I do want to do an episode about Disney as well, because every time people talk about Disney on podcasts, I just want to chime in and like speak on it and be like, oh my God, yeah, da da da. Like I love the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, like all these sorts of things. So I do want to do one about Disney, but that's for another day. Anyway, back to this. Yeah, I was just anxious to go, but I was really grateful because first vacation since COVID. And this was a vacation where I put my phone down. I put my out of office weekend vacation response on my email. And I was like, there is true. There is truly nothing more that I need in this moment other than this. Like I have my family with me. I have my boyfriend with me. I don't need my phone. And like to feel like that was such a great feeling. And I did not look at my phone for the first like three days and it was it was just so nice to feel so complete again and just to feel like all of my people are right in front of me and this is all that matters. And that was really, really nice. So I definitely took like a big digital detox and that just felt so good. But it was also just so like nourishing to be back in Santa Barbara, a place I haven't been in so long to be with my family, my boyfriend, and just be really happy. Like I can't remember the last time that I was just so at peace and I was just like 
I'm good. So it, it was really nourishing and it just was a really great vacation. Also, I forgot how much I loved Santa Barbara. I don't think I appreciated its beauty when I was younger. Now that I'm 25, I turned 26 next month, which is just so crazy. But now that I'm 25, I really appreciate the beauty of it so much more. It looks a lot like Hawaii, which I never realized. We went to Hawaii in 2019 for my grandma's 80th birthday. And now in Santa Barbara, five years later, I just see how similar they are. And it makes sense that she was born in Hawaii and then grew up in Santa Barbara because like in Hawaii, when you are driving around or you're just there, you can always look out at the ocean, you see the other islands, and then you look behind you and you see the mountains and the volcanoes. Like it's just a gorgeous, beautiful island. And in Santa Barbara, it was very similar. Like you look out and you see the islands and then you look around you and you see the mountains and the water. It was just stunning and so beautiful. And, um, I was just amazed at how active it was out there. Like I live in PA and I feel like two last week or two weeks ago, I was talking about how I never want to leave PA. Oh my God, I would totally move to Santa Barbara in a heartbeat. It was just so beautiful and so active. And I feel like people there are just so alive. Like we went out to the wharf on Monday night and it was like a school night for kids, but it was just so alive. Like everyone was doing something. All these kids were out. Like it was just so fun to see and to witness. And I was like, this is like what it's about. Like this is a living man. So I just loved it. We did a lot of fun things. We let's see on Sunday when we got there, we just went shopping. Um, we went out to eat a little bit, just like Sunday. We just like got settled in Monday. We were at this, like I said, we were staying at this amazing Airbnb. It was just so stunning. And they had this gorgeous pool. They had a really fun backyard. So Monday we just, we were going to go to the wineries up and over the mountain, but we were like, we're just going to stay at the house. And we just swam all day. It was so much fun. And then at night, um, me, my boyfriend, my sister and her boyfriend, we went to all go get ice cream on the wharf. And that was really fun. The four of us. Tuesday, we went um, ATVing at, at Pismo, Pismo Beach um, on the sand dunes. That was cool. I'm going to talk about that when it comes to fear. On Wednesday, what did we do on Wednesday? Oh, it was raining on Wednesday. So my best friend from LA, Lindsay, she came up and she hung out with us on Wednesday. But because it was raining, we just like got breakfast sandwiches and we went to the Natural History Museum. And then we went back to the house and we watched Love is Blind and we watched movies. There was like a pool house that we hung out in the pool house and that was really fun. Thursday, what was Thursday? We went to just like some more museums on Thursday and that was really fun. And then Friday I flew home. So, and then we had a wedding last night of um, some friends from high school. So yeah, it's been a busy week. So if again, like if this episode's out a bit late, I apologize, but it was a really fantastic week, a great vacation, and just a really good detox. So Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation. The list really is endless. From blue light glasses, twilight therapy, to EMF management, and circadian-friendly lighting, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern way day of life effortlessly and with maximum impact. My favorite products from Bond Charge is without a doubt their infrared sauna blanket. I love sauning and it was something that I wanted to do every single day, but it was very inconvenient for me to get to the sauna for a few reasons. Number one, it was at the gym and the gym is pretty far away. Number two, I like to sauna at the end of the day because it helps with your sleep, but I didn't really love leaving my house at the end of the day to go to the gym to sauna. And I looked into at-home saunas and they were so expensive. So it was just like a thing I was just going to have to deal without. But then that's when Bond Charge came in and oh my God, did it change my life. The Bond Charge infrared sauna blanket solved every single one of my problems. I was able to sauna at home. It was much more inexpensive, like beyond a fraction of the cost I'm talking to get a sauna blanket than it was to get an actual sauna. And that has been game changer. I've been able to relax. I sleep a lot better when I sauna at night and I'm able to stay in the sauna session 
for like 30 to 40 minutes because your head is out of it. And I can do things like watch TV. I'm really into summer house right now. So I'm watching a ton of summer house and it's just been really, really awesome. I'm obsessed. I feel really relaxed. I sleep really well. It's just been like the best way to have any sort of wellness when you want to up your wellness game. Bond Charge ships worldwide in rapid time, and they have free shipping on every sauna blanket with no hidden fees, and they have easy returns and exchanges, and they have a 12-month warranty. So go to bondcharge.com slash manifest and use coupon code manifest to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash manifest and use coupon code manifest to save 15%. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. So don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, then you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. So ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. What I love about Indeed is that whenever I'm looking for a candidate, I put it out on Indeed and instantly I get matched with exactly what I'm looking for. So I don't really have to waste time like scrolling through resumes or anything like that to make sure that they're what I'm looking for. Every resume that I do look for has exactly the qualifications that I need. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning your preferences. So the more that you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash manifest. Just go to Indeed.com slash manifest right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash manifest. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Your dog is a member of the family, so serve them the top quality food that they deserve, and that is Nom Nom. All dogs are individuals, and they deserve to be served like it. Nom Nom delivers freshly made dog food personalized to your dog's preferences and unique caloric needs. Nom Nom is made with 100% premium ingredients. That means 0% freaky fillers or anything funky. Dogs love great tasting meals just like us, yet their nutritional needs are different than ours. That's why Nom Nom's nutrient-packed recipes are developed by board-certified veterinary nutritionists, freshly made and shipped free to your door. Nom Nom has already delivered over 40 million meals. That's because the best dogs, yours, deserve the best food, ours. I love Nom Nom for both of our dogs. We have two dogs. We have Frankie and Ringo. Ringo is a much bigger dog. He is a Dalmatian lab mix and he is older. He's 11. And then we have little Frankie who is our Shih Tzu. He is about eight months old and they are two piece in a pod yet they could not have more different needs when it comes to their food. Because Ringo is a little bit older, he has a lot of dry skin. So we like to tailor his food to be very rich for his skin. And because Frankie is so young and little and vibrant, he's like all about experiencing life. So his foods are always nutrient packed and he loves anything that tastes great. They love both of their foods and we couldn't be more excited that they have Nom Nom. They love it. This is Nom Face Assured or your money back guarantee. And Nom Face is Nom Speak for dogs deliriously excited about dinner. Say bye to boring dog food. Your dog deserves a reason to run to their bowl every single meal, every single day. Go right now for 50% off for your no risk two week trial at trynom.com slash manifest. Spelled trynom.com slash manifest for 50% off. That's trynom.com slash manifest. I want to talk about a few things about overcoming fear. Um, the first that I want to talk about is flying. So I have a really big fear of flying and it's something that I have had since 2015 and every time I got on a plane, you would think it gets better, but it actually gets worse. And what's so crazy is the way out there is never as bad as the way home. And I think it's because when I'm going out somewhere, I really think about it for a long time. Like I started thinking about my flights that I have like a month in advance, like I have this flight. I really don't want to go on the flight. 
And that's really my line of thinking. Like, I don't want to go on the flight. And the reason that I don't want to go on the flight is because I think I'm going to die when I go on the flight. Like, it really is like, it feels like life or death to me. Like, it feels like every time I step on a plane, I could die. And that's really not a fun feeling to have. And I, I struggle with it because obviously of what I just said, but also because I have tried a bunch of things to get me through these flights. So I have tried taking anxiety meds like Ambien, Xanax, things like that. I've tried gummies that are um, marijuana. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I think I can say weed on a podcast. Yeah, Joe Rogan smokes weed on his podcast. I can talk about weed. So I've tried weed gummies and they have helped, but I had a really bad high when I was coming home from Disney one time with my boyfriend and I almost didn't get on the plane. It was horrendous. Thank God the flight was an hour delayed. So I got to like come down a little bit from a high, but it was crazy because it was one of these capsules that like I've tried many times and I enjoyed it but I don't know what was going on I just had like a really bad high this one time and it was when I had to get on a plane so that was horrendous so after that I like swore off being high and also it wasn't a thing where it was like high masks being anxious it was like okay great so now I'm just high and anxious like it wasn't a good match here's what I will say Xanax and Ambient they 100% work but for me I didn't want to put myself in a position where I needed to take a Xanax or an Ambien to get on a plane. Like I really wanted to do it naturally and I wanted to get over this anxiety. I wanted to just face it and get through with it. This past time, I knew that we were having later flights. So I knew I wanted to sleep on the plane. So I got extra strength melatonin. It definitely worked, but the problem would be like I would wake up from any sort of turbulence and I would then remember I was on a plane and I would get super anxious and then I'd have to breathe to get back to a normal pace. My thing with flying, I explained the whole death thing, but my thing with flying too is like a lot of people think it's a lack of control. It's really not that, but it's more so just like we're 30,000 feet up in the freaking air. And I'm supposed to trust all these strangers on a plane that no one's going to do anything crazy while we're up in the air. I'm not even thinking about like, you know, 9-11, the horrors of 9-11. It's not even things like that that cross my mind. It's like, what if I have a heart attack on the plane? Or what if I get sick on the plane? Or what if someone around me decides to just like break a glass from first class and like stab someone like I just have these crazy intrusive thoughts about other people on the plane and also I hate the turbulence I know everyone says planes are designed for turbulence okay I don't want to feel a bump so the entire plane ride when it's smooth air I'm just like I have to look out the window and just make sure that it's still smooth like I know none of this makes sense but that's anxiety nothing about anxiety makes sense And when I say this out loud, I know I sound crazy and I know I sound really irrational, but that's anxiety. It's irrational thinking that you manifest into like reality. So I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds irrational. I know it's the easy thing to just like medicate yourself, go to sleep, wake up and the flight's over. But for me, it's really not that easy. And I I truly wish it was because I would travel a lot more if I could fly. But I also know that on the other side of flying is like a beautiful destination like Santa Barbara. It's a beautiful destination like Hawaii. I try not to let it hold me back. The truth of the matter is it does hold me back. There are a lot of places that I want to go that I won't go because I don't want to have to deal with the flight. But I am working on it and I'm getting better at it. You wouldn't believe it based off everything I just said, but I actually am getting better at it. I only cried twice this time, which is really good. And sometimes it feels good to cry and just to let out my emotions. Like when you have emotions that are pent up and you're like, I just need to cry and let this out. Sometimes that's what's best. And that's, it just, it's a release that needs to happen. So yes, I only cried twice this time and I didn't take any sort of medication um, I like to say I raw dogged both my flights. I, but here's how I fly. Okay. I, oh, I took melatonin on the way out. 
So maybe that's not a raw dog. On the way home, though, I took nothing because we had early morning flights and then I had to drive home from the airport. And I was like, I shouldn't take extra strength melatonin. That would be very irresponsible of me. I also don't drink alcohol. And I've been getting questions about that. If I'm still not drinking, yes, I'm still not drinking. Maybe I'll do like another episode if I hit two years. Um, And again, it's just a day by day choice to not drink alcohol, but I like not drinking. So I'll probably continue. Anyway, um, here's how I fly. I sit down, whatever I fly. I don't listen to music. I don't do anything. I literally stare out the window for as long as I possibly can. Normally it's like an hour to an hour and a half that I will just look out the window while we take off. And I do this so that by the time I look back at my phone and I check the time, because also let's say this, like on our flight from Phoenix to Philly, it was a three hour and 49 minute flight. So in my mind, the last 45 minutes is all landing and landing is good. Like landing, we're safe, like landing, like we're going down to safely land on the ground. Like I've made it through the flight. And I, I know people say the most dangerous part is to take off in the landing. In my mind, the landing is good. Um, so in my mind, if I can get to 45 minutes before the landing, like I've made the flight, we're safely in it. We're safely out of it. So like, for example, the flight took off at 1030. So I was like, okay, I just have to get to 130 because that's three hours. And then the rest of it, we just get to the ground and I'm good to go. So I try to go as long as I can without checking my phone. And I just stare out the window, no music, nothing. I look out the window and I normally will do like a yoga sequence or just something to like distract my mind or calm me down. When I say do a yoga sequence, like in my mind, I'll teach a yoga class. And then if there's ever any turbulence or anything, when I look out the window, for some reason, it just calms me down. Don't know why. I also like flying better at night because I can't see the ground and I can see other planes in the sky. And that brings me a lot of comfort. When I see other planes in the sky, it just reminds me that like, I'm not alone. This is very safe. And that feels good to know that we're not alone. Like sometimes during the day, when I can't see other planes and I can see high, how high up off the ground we are, I get really stressed out and panicked. But when it's nighttime and I can't see that and I can see the planes, I feel a little bit better. So that's that with that. Then I go for like an hour, hour and a half. And then when I feel like, okay, I'm ready for my next thing, I'll put in a podcast episode and it's typically the toast. And there's something about the toast that is really soothing and comforting. And I actually fall asleep a little bit to the toast, not frequently, but I go like in and out of it. And that helps pass the time. Then normally that ends the flight and like we're good to go. I also don't really fly for very long flights. Like the longest flight we take is like from Philly to Phoenix, which is just under five hours. Um, But obviously flying east is much faster than it is flying west. So like on the way home, it's an hour shorter. So it's under four hours, which is amazing. Um, Anyway, if. I am feeling really crazy. I will watch a movie, but I normally honestly don't watch movies because I can't enjoy them because I'm so worried about like if there's going to be turbulence. Here's what I have to say. On the way out to Phoenix, we had an incredible flight attendant who said that it might be a little bit bumpy. And if turbulence scares you, you just have to think about how a car can handle bumps on the road. A plane is designed to take bumps in the air and just let it rock you to sleep. Now, did that help me? Yeah, for like five seconds. But here's what I will say. I appreciate so much hearing those things. And I think I speak for a lot of anxious flyers when I say this. I really just wish the pilots and the flight attendants told us a little bit more about how planes work, because I don't think a lot of us understand how planes fly and what turbulence is and why we shouldn't fear it. Now, when I'm safely on the ground, I can say all this stuff, but when I'm up 30,000 feet in the air and the plane is shaking, I'm scared. Like, I really am. Like, I know I shouldn't worry about it, but I do. So if anyone that's listening is a flight attendant or a pilot, if you could say that stuff to your passengers on the plane, it really, really helps. Also, on our flight back from Santa Barbara to Phoenix, there was... um, the flight attendant came on and said, we're going to have a very bumpy ride. That freaked me the fuck out before we even took off from the ground because now I have an hour long flight that's going to be like very bumpy. We're going to be high up in the sky. Like it really freaked me out. And to be honest, 
that was a very smooth flight. We had like next to no bumps. And I guess she said that because the day prior, there were a lot of storms in like the Phoenix and Dallas area. I know they're far apart, but I guess they were like in that side of the country. And it made for really rocky flights the day before. And she just said that for the next day. So that really stressed me out for the flight. And then I was stressing the whole flight, honestly, for nothing because it was a really smooth flight. But what I did appreciate was when the pilot came on, he said, hey, guys, we have a really weird flight today. And he told us the route that we were going. And I really loved that. So like I I really enjoy just being in the know of what's going on. And maybe that does come back to like the control thing. It's not that I want to fly the plane. I don't. I have no idea how to fly a plane. I want the professionals to fly the plane. But I also just want to be like in the know, like what's going on with our flight. I really do enjoy that. I also really enjoy hearing things Um, like when we were on the tarmac waiting to take off from Santa Barbara to Phoenix, the pilot was like, hey, guys, what we're waiting on is what's called a wheels up time. And we just have to talk with the Phoenix airport of wheels up so that we can land there at a certain time. I love knowing all that because that also reassures me as a nervous flyer that like there are air traffic controls that are tracking our entire flight the entire time. Like knowing that our pilots are always talking to someone on the ground the entire flight is a very comforting feeling. So I, as a nervous flyer, would just love to know a little bit more about that. So if anyone is listening to this and works anywhere in the airline industry, these are just my tips and suggestions. Okay. I'm going to move on from the fear of flying. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was ATVing in the sand dunes of Pismo Beach. Okay. So I did this when I was maybe like 14, 15 or 16. I can't remember. It was somewhere in there. I remember it was during my Tumblr era because Kylie Jenner posted that she went ATVing in the sand dunes. So I wanted to go ATVing in the sand dunes and we were in Santa Barbara that summer and we did. It was me, my mom, my dad, my sister, my best friend at the time, her name was Emily and my sister's best friend at the time, her name was Holly. So we all went ATVing in the sand dunes at Pismo Beach and it was so much fun. And I just remember being so fearless. Like I was ripping through the sand dunes, And these sand dunes are pretty intense. Like when they give you the instructions, like they just, there's no guide. So they just send you into the dunes and they're like, follow this fence to get in there. You turn left and then like you can explore and you can go anywhere in the dunes that you want to. And they tell you, they're like, the dunes have pretty big drops. Like you can go up a hill and on the other side of the hill, there might be a 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, foot drop. They said there's one 100 foot drop and you can go down it, but like, good luck getting back up it. But it's also like, if you're going really fast over these Hills and you don't know what's on the other side of it, you can just like literally free fall down one of these sand dunes. So at the time when I was a teenager, I was fearless. Like when you're a teenager, you think that you're truly invincible. Nothing bad is going to happen to you, whatever. Now I'm 25, like I'm like nine, 10 years older at this point. So I'm doing the sand dunes and we wanted to do it because my sister and I, both of our boyfriends wanted to do it. And then I also wanted to do it. My sister wanted to do it and my cousins wanted to do it. So we're like, well, like all the kids will just go do it. So we get down there, we go to the sand dunes and it really was like just a new experience for me where I was very afraid if I'm being totally honest. And there were a few times when like my boyfriend was having the time of his life and he was just going, when we first started, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. When we first started and the instructor was explaining everything to us, like you have to, you know, be careful looking over the other side of it because when you get to the top, you don't know what drop is ahead of you in the sand dunes. We don't make the course. Like it's literally nature. The sand dunes make their own course. So there's really big drops in there. There's small hills in there. There's like ripples in there. Like you just have to be alert. If you get injured, call this number. If you're really injured, call 911. If you get stuck, call this number. This is how you dig yourself out of it. Don't put your legs outside. Like they really do teach you all these things because it is dangerous at the end of the day. And not to mention, I went to school with someone that passed away in a very unfortunate and tragic 
ATV accident. Like very recently, it was very spooky. Like I saw him and then a few weeks later he passed away. Like it was very, very spooky. So that was also in the back of my mind. And I was like, okay, I, I just need to like be really safe as I do this. So the instructor is explaining all this stuff to us. My boyfriend goes, I'm going to stick with you because I can tell you're like a little freaked out. And I was like, okay, thank you. That lasted all of five seconds because as soon as we got in the dunes, him and my sister's boyfriend just started like ripping at it and they just like had the time of their lives as I want them to. So me and my sister were just like trotting along, like doing our own thing. And then my sister was a little bit more fearless than me. And I was just like taking my time, like being a grandma on the sand dunes and just like being a little bit afraid. Anyway, so there was a few points where I was like stuck and I was like, I am at the top of a hill and I have to get down really big hills to get back to where I was. Or I'm literally just going to be stuck on the sand dunes forever and like, I can't do that. So there was one part of the dunes where I really just wanted to get back to level ground where I could kind of just like cruise around, ride around in the sand, like, and like, just have fun with it. You know what I mean? Because when it gets too steep, like you really, you can't tell what's on the other side of the dunes and going away from the sun. No, going yeah, going away from the sun, you can see shadows a lot more. So you can really see like where they do dip off. When you go the other way and you go back towards the beach, when you're going towards the sun, you can't like you can't differentiate levels at all. It looks like a flat road of sand until you get there and you start going up and down the hills and you're like, oh my God, like it's actually pretty crazy. I'll post a video about this too on my Instagram, but um it, it was just like a little crazy. So I was at one point where I was like, I need to, I need to get out of this hill and there's no way I can do it other than go down a really big hill because I made it to the top and now I have to go down a really big hill and I just have to like find my way out of it. And I was alone at this point. My sister was somewhere else. Everyone was somewhere like I was alone at this point. So I just had to like figure this out. So I end up going down this really big hill and it brought me to now the bottom of a dune where I had to go up another hill. And then I have no idea what's on the other side of this big uphill, but it was the only way to go to get anywhere back to the beach. Plus I was also very lost. I had no idea where I was in the sand dunes. I had no idea where the fence was. I had no idea where the beach was. Like I was kind of panicking a little bit and I was alone. So I ended up going up a hill and then I see one more big downhill. And then on the other side of the downhill was the fence to the beach. And along the fence to the beach were like just these really fun flat ish roads, not roads, flat sand with like ripples in it that you could just like kind of go fast on and cruise around on. So I'm like, that's where I'm going to go. So I had to go down this really big hill. And then I got to like a part of the sand that I was really comfortable in. And I spent the next like 20 minutes there just like, playing around like ATVing, just having really like a lot of fun, like going really fast and just like having a lot of fun. And I said to myself, when I got down there, I said, you have to get to the other side of fear to find a new, a new comfort zone. And that just really stuck with me because this trip was a lot of overcoming fear. I had to fly to get there. I had to fly to get home. I had to get over really big hills in the sand dunes to find a place that I was comfortable in. And there was another experience where we were driving up the side of a mountain and it was really freaking scary because it was technically a two lane like road, but it was only one lane, like only one car could fit. There was no guardrail. It was a very windy mountain and it was straight down. Like if we went off the side of the mountain in this car, like we would literally die. Like I'm not exaggerating whatsoever. I will also post a picture on the Instagram. It was just a massive drop off and there's no guardrail, nothing like you just got to like drive correctly and hope that no one else is coming down. It was really scary. But when you got to the top of the mountain, the views were just breathtakingly beautiful. It was just, it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. So what I'm getting at is that there were a lot of times in this trip where I was fearful, but I had to overcome the fear to reach a feeling of comfort and to reach a feeling of beauty and to experience more life. I had to get over the fears that I had because if I was fearful from the beginning and never got on the plane, I would never even have gone to Santa Barbara and remembered how much I love it. If I didn't get over the really big hills and the sand dunes, I would have been stuck and I would have never found this really fun play field of sand and ripples and going fast. If I never got up the mountain, I would have never seen the gorgeous, beautiful, breathtaking views that I'll probably never see again. Like 
there's there there's beauty on the other side of fear and that was it really resonated with me and it was just a really good reminder that sometimes you have to do things that scare you to death to figure out a new a new path of life and to see something extraordinary that you've never seen before or to even get to a familiar feeling again that feeling of comfort right like sometimes comfort is on the other side of fear and it's just doing something that's so scary to you to feel comforting again because there's comfort There's fear and then there's comfort, right? And in between it is a big mountain. And if you always stay in the pre-fear comfort, you're never going to grow. You're never going to change. You're never going to expand. But if you face fear head on and you don't back down from it on the other side of that, that comfort that is so familiar and so good to feel, it's a new comfort, right? Because you've now conquered something that you once feared and you survived it. And you have this this comforting feeling that you recognize and you know, but now you're seasoned because of it, right? And you're evolved because of it. So it really was a beautiful message and a beautiful symbolism and metaphor of the whole trip. And it just kind of tied everything together with the perfect little bow. And it it just made me really happy. So I wanted to share that today about fear. The last thing that I wanted to talk about, (sighs) body image, things like that. Okay, you guys, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's, I'm eating really good at my parents' house. If I'm being totally honest, like my dad's downstairs right now making homemade pasta. My mom like is an amazing chef. She always cooks. There's always cookies and brownies and like gorgeous stuff downstairs, like all the time. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that, maybe it's stress. Maybe it's, I'm not prioritizing my workouts. I really don't know, but I just feel like I have just kind of reverted back to a, state of mind that I was in that I have openly talked about on this podcast before. It's definitely not as bad, but I, I hear thoughts creeping in. Like today, for example, I woke up, we had a wedding last night and I woke up and my face was so puffy and, um, it was like 10 30. We had a thing at stride at one. I knew I wasn't going to be done until three 30. Then I had this podcast that I wanted to record and it's a Sunday. And I was saying to myself like, Oh, I should have breakfast before I go podcast and or before I go to stride and then I thought to myself well I'm really not hungry like I guess I don't need breakfast and that was something that I used to say to myself all the time like you really like you don't need food you don't need this you don't need that and that's really not a good mindset that I want to be in because food is fuel and nourishment it's not a reward it's not a punishment it's just a source of energy for our body. And I don't want to deprive and deplete my body from the energy that it needs. On the flip side of that, um, I just feel like I have been like, I don't know if like, I just have been uncomfortable in my skin, which is a, a feeling that I haven't felt in about two years, two, three years at this point. And it's a very bizarre feeling. And I don't know if maybe my body's just maybe going through like another round of puberty. Like the woman's bodies are always changing. Like I could just be, you know, developing more features, growing up a little bit more. I don't know. Maybe my metabolism is changing. I'm not really sure. But I just like feel myself mentally creeping into like a headspace that I don't want to be in. And on top of it, being skinny, 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 skinny is so like, in trend right now, which is so weird that body types are a trend, but like you're seeing celebrities like Kylie Jenner, like she lost a ton of weight and it's like, she didn't even have weight to lose, but now she lost a ton of weight. She looks so different than she did. We hear drugs like Ozempic and all this sort of stuff, which I'm not hating on weight loss drugs, but I'm just saying like the thing that we're now being fed again through the media is like skinny, 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 skinny's in low rise jeans, like have your stomachs out skimpy clothes, like da da da, all sort of stuff. And it's like, I don't feel confident to do that. So then I get in my head of like, am I doing something wrong? Am I not where I should be? So I'm just having like these really wild old thoughts. And I have been meaning to go back actually and listen to some of my older episodes where I post like, I think I have an episode called like how I fixed my body image or 
how I talk about my body now or something like that. And I want to listen to that because I remember a lot of my advice was like, once you stop stressing about it, it begins to work out in your favor again. And you just become healthier overall. You feel better overall. When you don't stress about the food and you don't restrict your food and you don't limit your food and you make everything on limits, like nothing's off the table. Everything is, you can have anything that you want. I just developed a much healthier relationship with food and a much healthier body image relationship. And as a result of it, I ended up like really toning up without trying to because I was doing workouts I genuinely enjoyed. I was eating the foods I genuinely enjoyed. And I was just healthier because I genuinely wanted to be healthier. And that's kind of where I want to be again and where I'm working my way back to. But this isn't like a period conversation because I don't even have an end to it, but I, I just wanted to kind of like open up about it because I know summer's coming and now we're going to see a lot of the messaging of like, oh, summer's coming, you know, tone up, do this, do that. And it's like, I don't want to subscribe to that, but I also just want to be very vulnerable and open about like, this is something that I used to talk about a lot on this podcast and I haven't talked about it in a while because I've been in a really good headspace with it. But the past few months or so, weeks, I should say, I've just been feeling like these thoughts kind of creep back in where I don't want to like wear shorts. And when we were in the pool on Monday, like I was like a little insecure in my bathing suit. And it was just like, I just haven't felt like this in a while. And I know if I open up about it, it might help someone else out there just not feel alone. I don't have the answer. I don't have the solution, but I will keep you posted on it. But it's just like how I've been feeling lately. And I don't know. I just, you know, coming out of winter and into summer is always a a big transition. And, you know, with the wedding last night too, like I was like in a tight dress and I was like, I just don't want to be in a tight dress. My arms were out and I was just like, I just feel uncomfortable in my own skin. I haven't felt like that in a while. So I don't know. I just wanted to share it. And I'm not coming on here with the plan of like, this is what I'm doing to fix it. But I do know like what I want to do to feel better and healthier overall. Like I know I want to eat whole foods. Like I really want to make sure that the foods I'm eating are sourced responsibly and that they're good whole foods. I want to make sure I'm drinking enough water. I want to make sure I'm doing a workout every day because it makes me feel mentally a lot better. So I know what those certain things I want to do, but not for the purpose of losing weight or toning up, but honestly more so just so that I feel healthier overall because it it's not a good feeling to feel sluggish. And like when you're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, like you're going to hit a breaking point. I'm not saying I say I feel sick and tired, but I just want to feel consistently good. And I think for the most part, I feel pretty good, but I know I could feel a lot better. Um, and I was talking with one of my employees who's a chiropractor and she adjusted me yesterday. It was my first time ever getting adjusted. It was awesome. And she was talking a lot about the nervous system and the spine and all things chiropractic. And it really inspired me. And it it just made me excited and lit up to hear about this. So this is a conversation I'm going to continue, but I just wanted to bring it up now before it comes out of the blue of nowhere one day and you guys are like, what is going on? So I guess that's my podcast today. Just like a little catch up of just being vulnerable about fear and body image. And I hope you guys enjoy these sorts of episodes. I know you guys really like chatty episodes. So I enjoyed this just very off the cuff and no script and just kind of going with like our free free flow of thoughts and things like that. So thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Manifest with Tori Simone. If you guys could rate the show five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It helps the show so much. Also share it with a friend, put it on your story. I always love seeing what you guys do when you guys listen to the podcast. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Happy Manifest Monday, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.